Hello, I'm Brett Cooper here with Richard Makerson, and today we're going to do a walkthrough of a new feature for the Blue Fletch Enterprise Toolset called Blue Fletch Chat. This is a new feature we've rolled out over the last year and wanted to cover some of the features and functionality and the background on why. So, Richard, thank you for joining me. Before we hop into it, maybe you could talk a little bit about what are the reasons or key points for why we decided to build a chat tool when there's a lot of other chat tools out there. Yep. So, you know, as you know, we're already uh, really focused on frontline workers and we saw a need out there for them to have a really simple tool for um, communication. So we figured, you know, why not us to build a tool from the ground up that's focused specifically for frontline workers and the shared use device scenario. Um, we wanted to also make it easy to deploy and drop in. Um, although there are other tools out there, um, some are built on other products. Others are meant for corporate-wide um, expansion, and so we wanted to make this really easy to um, drop in. And then um, d design for security. Um, you know, we're a single sign-on, a security-first company, so thinking about encryption, auditing, GDPR, um, those were topics that were very important to us. Excellent. And you, you mentioned other products. Do you want to do a quick fly through of Blue Fletch versus some of the other things that are out there? I know we, have, we run across a lot. We support a lot of different products with some of our customers. Maybe how it's the same or different than some other chat products on the market? Yeah. So typically the way we think about it is Teams and Slack. They're meant for corporate users. I need to reach anyone in the enterprise. You know, I jump in and as long as I know, you know, part of their name, kind of their name, maybe what group or project group I can um, get to them. Um, that's one grouping where, you know, we see, you know, some companies, you know, use um, teams for frontline workers, but, you know, it's really meant to have enterprise wide um, reach. Do I need someone in a warehouse or in a store having access to everyone in marketing or does it need to be specific to that store? Um, the other piece um, would be the other end of it would be um, some of the meeting um, companies. So you think about Zoom. You know, Zoom was really about how do I connect folks working remote? Um, how do we have these collaborative remote meetings? But now they're leaning into um, communications via um, chat, being able to you know call f um, folks. So we're seeing that piece. And then you have solutions like Zebra's. Um, Work Cloud Connect, where it's meant for frontline workers. Um, there are some pieces in it that um, sometimes can be, um, you know, a bit tough to digest. You know, it's not the easiest to set up. Um, configuring it, you know, sometimes could take a, a secondary degree. But I mean, in general, general, like it works and it's a solid tool for frontline workers. We have a number of our customers who um, combine that and uh, with our uh, launcher and SSO, and that works great for them. Got it, and then I know a question comes up a lot, VoIP support, do, you, do we support VoIP? No, that was um, a hard line in the sand for us. Um, we're see, seeing less need or ask for VoIP um, out in um, the frontline worker space. And VoIP, you know, in my humble opinion, is a bit messy to configure and dial in for a customer. So, you know, in the theme of keeping things very simple, very clean, um, we decided not to um, address um, that particular feature. Got it. And the, the products I know, Zebra's Workforce Connect has a really good VoIP integration. Cisco has some of that in their CUC EMA product. Um, those are definitely go-tos if you're using mobile devices. But I think of chat, Blue Fudge chat, more as a replacement for walkie-talkies. So if you're using walkie-talkies and you want to go to Android devices, it's very simple, very easy to use and it's along those lines. That's how I think about it. Yeah, it's a, that, that's a great way to frame it. Um, you know, we have, um, uh, you know, walkie-talkie-like feature, very easy to communicate. Um, that, that's a great way to frame, you know, our product. In, and from a device standpoint, just talking about what's what's actually required for Blue Fletch Chat. You, you talk about making it simple and easy to use. What are the, the things somebody needs if they want to use this product? Yep, so an Android device, um, Android 9 or higher, um, from an, a device or OEM perspective or agnostic, so whether you have Samsung, Honeywell, 
um, Zebra, it, it doesn't matter um, to us. It works on all of those devices. And just a solid internet connection that um, has port accessibility to HTTPS or 443. And, and this is a question that comes up a lot. Is the, is the traffic for communication, like what is going over the network versus what's going device to device? Do you have a, a quick overview of what the differences are there? We do. Primarily, um, all of the communications that you send, whether it's um, chat, multimedia, the push to talk, walkie talkie, that's all over um, your standard HTTPS, um, going over the internet. Um, however, we do have the capability for one to one audio and video like calls when you think of um, Hangout or FaceTime. And so that's you leveraging WebRTC. And the reason we kept it one to one is because it's a device to device connection. So um, there's no middleman, there's inherent security from WebRTC that we're leveraging. And that communication goes from device to device. So it's not traversing your WAN. It's, if you're in the same warehouse, it's going to happen in the same warehouse. So it's similar to walkie talkie. Exactly. Awesome. So let's get into it. Let's do a little walk through some of the functionality. Um, we're going to flip over and show on the screen uh, different pieces. We have some devices that are set up here. So maybe you, you talk us through the, the first piece, um, which is, you know, how do you get to the, the Blue Flash Chat? Like, how does this actually work on a device if you want to get to it, if it's installed? Yeah, so currently Blue Flash Chat leverages Blue Flash SSO. So um, if you have your Blue Flash launcher, um, when you log in, you will um, automatically be logged into chat. And so for our existing Blue Fletch customers, this makes deployment super simple. If you already have Blue Fletch Enterprise deployed, just deploy the chat APK. Um, by default, everyone at a site can communicate. It's that simple. And, and can you talk a bit about the different communication patterns? So I have on you have your device where we're both logged in here in the Blue Fletch Launcher. Let's talk about the, can we start with the one-to-one? -one? So on, go to online and you can see me and I can see you. What does that What does that look like? Yep, so in the online list, you see everyone who's online at your current site and you can start one-to-one -one, um, communication. This is also configurable in our portal. Uh, so by default, you can have one-to-one, -one, but there are customers that um, want one-to-one -to, -one to be restricted to a certain role, meaning only store managers or a manager level and above can talk one-on-one -on -one and employees have to talk in a group that includes managers. Um, so online, you can see who's online, you select them and then um, you can start to send messages. They could be text messages, it can be um, video, it could be um, pictures, it can also be a walkie-talkie message. Um, and with the walkie-talkie message, we handle that a little bit differently. Um, I like to think of it as a mix of text messaging and vis visual voicemail, meaning that when someone gets a walkie-talkie message, if I'm busy or if I'm dealing with a customer, I can go back and play that message and see it in the history of the thread. I can go back and play that message. I can go back and play that message. Just like that. And then for the the pieces around the camera, how does that work? Is that, what does that use for, for taking a picture or video? You just click on it and you can send that to, to an individual? You can send it to an individual or you can send it to a group. So um, in the portal, you can assign um, roles. So you can have your roles from your IDP um, connected to chat, BF chat roles, and then you can um, create groups. So you might want to have a group or channel around just store associates. You might want to have a channel around AP or loss or security. And um, that way you can have, um, you know, tailored groups to have tailored uh, communications. Got it. So when you post to a group, so if you're posting to the associate groups, it would show up on a device or any device that's in the store in the associates group? Exactly. Got it. And then for video and voice, you talked about the one-to-one. -one. Can you talk about what that, can we show what that looks like for communicating on two devices? Yep, so let me find you online. Um, I'll hit the video button. And I'll easily put it on mute. So <laughs> now um, I can see Brett, he can see me. We need to mute it so that we don't have um, the feedback loop, but very quick, very simple. Um, and so this is great when you have um, 
someone out in the field and you need um, some expert advice or quick advice and um, need to visually sh show something to someone in real time. So um, great for those scenarios. Excellent. And then on the back end, if we can talk a little bit about what the back end looks like. I got this pulled up on the screen, so we're going to screen share for folks. But the the various pieces within here, so we have uh, the chat channels, sorry, chat roles, let's start with that. So when we talk about roles, what is defined as a role? What does that look like? And how are those laid out? Yep. So typically from your identity provider, you get um, a number of either roles or groups that you're associated with, uh, meaning you could be a store user, uh, maybe you have a role like plumbing or gardening or um, cash register. And so you can associate those roles coming from the IDP to roles within um, BlueFletch. So once that mapping is created, that allows you to tailor who is in what group. So when I log in and the BlueFletch launcher receives those IDP roles, um, chat will get that and know exactly uh, which groups to put you in and who you can and cannot communicate with. And those are assigned in these chat channels. So exactly. You have the different roles that are assigned to a channel. And then logging. Can you talk a bit about logging, what that is, how that works, why, why we have that, and how that might be different than some other tools that are out there? Exactly. Um, you, you know, it's very simple to have uh, communication for frontline workers, but if I'm operations, if I'm um, um, part of auditing, I may want to understand, like, what are people communicating about? Are there problems that are happening out in the field that are not making uh, making it up the, the food chain, so to speak? Um, so we capture this information, and it's really the start of some of the new fe uh, features that are coming down on our roadmap. So you can start to um, run some analysis to understand, do I need to provide training to a certain individual or a certain store? Um, are there um, issues out in the field that are not being reported that now I can take action on? And so it's really laying the groundwork for um, understanding what's being said out in the field and for the organization to take um, note of that. Yeah, and then the switching gears, I, just to wrap up here, you talked about some of the things that are coming down for new features and functionality. Can you talk about what those are? and when people might look to experience those on the platform? Yep, so um, I don't wanna say first up, but the first one I'll talk through is standalone uh, chat. So we built this for frontline workers. It works on these rugged devices, but sometimes there is a district manager or a manager who comes in who doesn't have access to um, a shared device, but they do have a corporate device. How can they participate um, in the conversation or um, communicate with someone um, at that uh, location. And so standalone Blue Fletch chat is coming down um, um, the feature roadmap, probably start with Android first, and we'll see uh, what other needs uh, will take us um, down the road. The other piece is um, AI integration. So AI has been a hot topic for the last year, especially with generative AI. And so us figuring out what does that mean here at Blue Fletch and how are we going to um, provide that comes in a number of ways. Um, the first is voice to text um, for our walkie talkie messages. Since we store and forward and you can play it back, um, just having that transcription automatically happen um, is just um, you know low hanging fruit for us to provide that um, experience um, that you're not going to get on some of these other uh, solutions. The other piece is supporting third party bot integration. Uh, not that we necessarily want to build our own bot or have a Blue Fletch bot, but we do want to um, be the launching pad for some of these AI solutions. And chat is a very um, a great one. So whether um, your company is leveraging um, ChatGPT, Core.ai, Gemini from Google, um, being able to have support where um, you can take your own bot and plug it into Blue Fletch chat um, is what we're um, looking to support. Excellent. Well, Richard, thanks for sharing these features with us. If people want to learn more about Blue Fletch Chat or if they're an existing customer, how would they get to test this out or try this on their devices? So if you're an existing customer, reach out to customer success. Um, you can always go to our website, bluefletch.com, to learn more um, or email us at info at and someone will definitely reach out with you. Excellent. Thank you very much.